we also do have uh, with us uh, um, Mr. Uh, Sommer, Nicolas Sommer. He is uh, from uh, Vienna, from the Urban Innovation Vienna, the Smart City Agency of uh, Vienna. So from my side, thanks for having me here. Um, I will try to just sketch briefly uh, Vienna smart city approach and try to put it a little bit uh, into the COVID-19 context, maybe coming up with uh, some learnings uh, we could uh, benefit from uh, in the medium term. So Vienna basically is pursuing a, a holistic smart city strategy. Um, it calls its strategy a framework strategy. That means uh, the strategy per se uh, is thought to provide coherence to many, many different initiatives, plans, roadmaps, uh, and also to Vienna's digitization agenda, digitization strategy. Uh, the main claim of Smart City Vienna is to ensure uh, the highest possible quality of life to all of its citizens in line with the maximum amount of resource preservation. And uh, Vienna believes that this is only possible by a technological and social innovation. I'll come back to uh, this distinction uh, in a second. It implies, of course, if you pursue uh, a holistic strategy that governance is super important uh, as the process management is uh, nothing less than a management of a complex system of a complex city uh, transformation, uh, even more so than cities are political communities. So do you have to allocate various interests, interest groups that agree on our vision, of course, to make everything better in the long term, but how to get there is usually the problem uh, to decide who comes first, who is the first served, et cetera. Of course, uh, we are working together with cities as well uh, that are pursuing a more entrepreneurial strategy and they try to develop uh, on a project by project basis. In Vienna, we are happy enough you know, to have uh, several smart city projects labeled already, more than 70 infrastructure projects like self-sufficient, uh, energy self-sufficient wastewater treatment uh, plants, uh, crowdsourcing uh, in terms of uh, so citizen solar power plants. Uh, we are currently building an autonomous subway line. And of course, digitization plays a vital role, especially even more so in the COVID-19 context. We worked working on a digital twin uh, on the digitization of the public space here in Vienna that uh, opens up opportunities uh, and our way to many, many new use cases, for example, like virtual inspection, virtual maintenance, uh, virtual measurement, uh, which might be uh, important or of a certain importance in the COVID-19 context as well. Um, we also try to uh, put our focus, of course, on social innovation as we work with the elderly and seniors. So we have uh, run a quite sophisticated research project where we try to make elderly people more familiar uh, with digital services and tools in order to make our healthcare system more efficient. I will come back to that a little bit later, uh, as I would like to share with you one concrete example, one anecdote uh, in the COVID-19 context. Also, another example uh, I would like to mention is uh, Vienna Smart Traffic Lights, where we try to make use of uh, urban data, as we believe that there is a tremendous value uh, in, urban, uh, in urban data to be captured. Um, and the traffic lights are supposed to help us uh, to uh, optimize traffic flow, um, and uh, by uh, reducing waiting times, for example, and by, uh, you know, uh, decreasing or using or reducing stop and go traffic in our city. Of course, we have to control and, and monitor all the projects, but even more important, it turned out, uh, is the monitoring at a system level, at the process level. Uh, and if you have a holistic strategy, of course, that, that can be uh, quite a, a, a cumbersome thing, uh, a complicated thing to do, uh, because you have to come up with, with a lot of, uh, you know, target areas, you have to select the, the appropriate indicators to, to, to come up with qualitative and quantitative data, you have to do a lot of data crunching. Uh, and uh, what we had here in Vienna is a first round of uh, smart city monitoring a couple of years ago. And we had, first of all, we had quite interesting results. Uh, the first thing, uh, the first insight we had is that Vienna is quite well on track in most of these target areas to reach its long-term smart city goals. But as you can see here, indicated by the arrows, uh, even Vienna as a European city, of course, has to learn uh, in certain areas and get a lot better uh, to keep track and to uh, reach long-term goals. 
But what was even more important was that, you know, if you want to transform a city and morph a city into smart city, you have to deal with a lot of topical interrelations, with a lot of interdependencies, and in the worst case, with a lot of target conflicts, which is uh, of uh, a real, uh, you know, of utmost importance uh, for governance and, uh, you know, managing this complex system. Now I would like to get back to uh, these, um, the example, the project example, where we worked with elderly people and tried to digitize them in order to make our healthcare system more reliable, um, more, more sound and more efficient. Uh, just one example, we tried to um, kind of equip elderly people with uh, smart watches and with digital tools in order to uh, you know, enable them to transmit uh, certain medical data, for example, blood sugar uh, and blood pressure levels uh, to the hospital or to their doctors without you know, getting there you know, to, to have a routine treatment. And uh, the, the project uh, ran very well. Um, the people were very enthusiastic, eager to learn. They really wanted to pick up these digital tools uh, and use it. They, the trust was there as it was a research project. And we hoped uh, that we will uh, have a, a, a variety of benefits, uh, that we hoped that we could kind of relieve hospital staff, for example, with, that we could have less mobility uh, as people can stay at home. They don't, don't have to deal with waiting times. And in the COVID-19 context, of course, uh, they don't have to deal, uh, in that case, they don't have to deal with uh, potential disease transmission in, in waiting areas, for example, in the hospital. So many, many advantages, uh, technological value proposition that worked. And uh, we were eager and really curious to find out whether this is kind of transpires into the, the real world, into everyday life in our city. And the funny thing was we, we did not have these benefits and these gains at the systemic level. And uh, due to the fact that a significant proportion of people, even though they were quite enthusiastic and they really wanted to participate in the project, they still uh, stayed, did not want to stay at home because we learned one thing, because we did not consider one thing that a significant proportion of these elderly people, it was extremely important to get to the hospital because it one of the very few social interactions they had uh, in their uh, everyday life. And that's that what is in our, from our point of view, what a truly smart city really has to consider. So the city of Vienna with its holistic strategy always wants to kind of um, analyze uh, the technical or technological value propositions in conjunction or in the context of social inclusion, social equality and its ecological footprint. And only if you can look at these things uh, simultaneously, you can come up with proper use cases and maybe business cases that may lie uh, behind. So it's maybe interesting uh, at the end of my short input presentation to look at home office and homeschooling uh, as we are dealing with this type of uh, work and this type of um, organizing our education and digitizing our education for a couple of months as COVID-19 of course acts as an accelerator here. And it's the same thing. Uh, if we have these target conflicts in mind, of course, uh, we had a lot of benefits uh, due to our ICT infrastructures. We have a continuity of work, continu continuity of business. Uh, we have resilient supply chains. Uh, you can get everything in the supermarket still. We can make use of online commerce, online services, even e-government services were reliable and sound. And we had less movement in the city during the lockdowns, especially so we had less air pollution, less carbon emissions, etc. But there is a flip side of it. Um, as because you have to ask some critical questions. First of all, uh, is this burden distributed uh, equally? Because if you look to people who may not afford, you know, living space or who are have only very small apartments, or if you look to single parent homes, they are of course exposed to COVID-19 and to home office and homeschooling in a different way uh, than people who can very well afford, you know, uh, decent apartments who can uh, work together with their partners in life or even kind of in-source some type of care services, uh, et cetera. 
sec next thing uh, one should should take a careful look at is the local economy. If you rely more on online commerce, uh, on online businesses, online services, uh, it's important for a smart city that uh, the balance uh, between uh, international and global supply chains and local supply chains or regional supply chains uh, is sound. Uh, next thing would be if everybody sits at home, for example, making use of online commerce and uh, trying to uh, purchase the goods of, uh, and to, to address everyday needs online, what about the ground floors? Uh, what about uh, what about a city of short distances, which is one of the main goals of Smart City Vienna, and which is, of course, not easily compatible with social distancing. Uh, and last but not least, you have to consider a variety of rebound effects. It was mentioned earlier, uh, when you think about public transport, which is a backbone of our sustainability concept here in Vienna. Now, uh, in the COVID-19 context, of course, more and more people turn uh, and switch uh, back to motor traffic as they expect that uh, they uh, cannot, uh, you know, be infected uh, and that they do not want to expose themselves uh, to a potential uh, disease transmission uh, in uh, public transport vehicles, for example. So all in all, um, smart cities have to be wise, have to be sound, uh, have to rely on sound governance uh, structures, have to rely on trust when it comes to e-government services, and have to find ways to resolve uh, these target conflicts around uh, you know, the, the very basic dichotomy, resilience versus efficiency. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm looking forward to a uh, good discussion with you. Thank you.